Everyone loves a good comeback story. From Michael Jordan to Kei Hue Kwan, there's something about someone finding their second wind that really warms the soul. But not every comeback story involves an actor or athlete, some involve steam engines. After designing and building the BR Standard Class 7s in 1951, British Railways' chief mechanical engineer Robert Riddles felt that he could do better, and after the Class 7's introduction, kept requesting that British Railways let him start work on a new, more powerful class of engine. British Railways, however, were satisfied with the performance of the Class 7s, and felt that any further designs were simply unnecessary. In 1952, an accident left former LMS engine Princess Anne beyond repair, and so BR was left with a gap in their locomotive roster. In need of a powerful passenger engine, Riddles once more asked BR to let him design and build his improved locomotive. They agreed to let him build a prototype, and so Riddles got to work. The final design was essentially an overhauled version of his Class 7 Britannias. Riddles initially wanted to just make the two cylinders bigger, but Britain's restrictive loading gauge led him to instead fitting a third between the frames. Caprotti valve gear was settled on in place of standard Walsharts or Stevenson, as not only was it easier to maintain on inside cylinder engines, but it also allowed for much finer control of the amount of steam that entered the cylinders, as well as improving the boiler draft and exhaust flow. The end result was almost identical to a Class 7, having the same sized wheels, similar sized boilers, slightly bigger firebox, was about 3 inches wider and about 11 inches shorter. With plans drawn up, the engine was built at Crew Works in 1954. Despite not even being completed, the engine was already showing signs of trouble. The team building the engine had deviated from the drawings in some places, the ash pan and dampers in the firebox weren't proportioned correctly, but worst of all were some oversights in the design that were spotted too late to amend. To cope with the strong exhaust produced by the Caprotti valve gear, the engine would need a much better blast pipe in its smoke box. However, by the time this was noticed, a standard Swindon double chimney had already been fitted, something that wasn't cut out for the job. Upon completion, the engine was numbered 71000, named Duke of Gloucester, and was the first Class 8 BR standard engine, being given the power classification of 8P. Despite its supposed improved steaming characteristics, when put into service alongside the Pacific engines built by William Stanier, the Duke severely underperformed. Many footplate crews struggled to maintain a full head of steam, with others complaining how coal-hungry it was. As such, its performance greatly varied. Some firemen found no issue with it, saying that firing the Duke the same way they'd fire a three-cylinder Royal Scott would yield the best results. But the awkward nature of the engine, plus the fact it wasn't living up to its promise of improved performance, was enough to make many footplate crews resent it. It was so bad, some workers said they'd call in sick just to avoid having to fire it. As a result, the Duke spent most of its working life pulling boat trains along the North Wales coastline, a service that was relatively undemanding considering the power the engine was meant to have. After seeing its lackluster performance, Riddles requested that he be allowed to modify the engine and address some of its issues with the hopes of building more Class 8s. But given how expensive the Duke was to build in the first place, combined with British Railways pushing the modernisation plan in 1955, BR simply decided to leave it as it was. Duke of Gloucester continued to work until 1962, when it was finally withdrawn from service. As a one-of-a-kind engine, BR initially planned to donate it to the National Railway Museum, but eventually ended up cutting off and donating one of its cylinders to the Science Museum in London, while the rest was sold for scrap. It was mistakenly sent to Cashmore's scrapyard in Gwent and nearly cut up when a fireman noticed its destination label and had it delivered to its intended final resting place. And while for most engines the scrapyard spelled death, the Duke just so happened to end up in the hands of Di Woodham at the Barry Island scrapyard. Because Woodham prioritised breaking up old trucks and wagons over engines, the Duke, along with many other engines, simply sat in sidings rusting while enthusiasts raised money to preserve them. Eventually, the Duke of Gloucester Steam Locomotive Trust was formed and purchased the engine in 1973, along with the tender, smoke deflectors and double chimney of a 9F. 
1974, it was cosmetically restored and taken from Barry to the Great Central Railway, where work began getting it back into working order. That was easier said than done, as not only was the engine heavily rusted, but also missing many important components, including its Caprotti valve gear, the unique design of which would be impossible to replicate without the original drawings. Not helping was the lack of interest from other enthusiasts, as they felt it was a lost cause to try and restore an engine that was deemed a failure. Through luck, the trust acquired the drawings and work continued at a steady pace. During restoration, when the trust found the firebed air inlet dampers were the wrong size, they decided to correct the issue, as well as fit a Calchap blast pipe in the smoke box. Because the dampers were smaller than intended, they heavily restricted airflow to the fire at speed, and the small chimney caused serious problems with the draft in the firebox, resulting in the original engine's poor performance. With these issues now corrected, along with a few other minor tweaks, the trust could now truly show off what the Duke was capable of. It was steamed again in 1986 and officially recommissioned by the Duke of Gloucester himself in November that same year. To say the engine had a glow up would be an understatement. Not only did it steam far easier than it did originally, but managed to outperform not just the other steam engines it ran alongside, but also the Type 4 and 5 diesels that had replaced it all those years ago. So fantastic was the increase in performance that a former fireman who detested working on the Duke while in service found the improved engine so brilliant to drive that he insisted on being allocated to it. During the sharp trials of 1995, it further managed to show its stuff by breaking the record for fastest northbound ascent and outperforming both LNER A4 Sir Nigel Gresley and LMS Duchess of Hamilton, two engines it couldn't hope to match back in the 50s. Ever since its return to steam, Duke of Gloucester has earned its place as a frequent runner on mainline excursions, becoming a common sight at the head of many luxury services. Quite the upgrade from boat trains if you ask me. Let the Duke then be a lesson to us all that not everyone starts out great, but sometimes a little help and a second chance is all someone needs to exceed. Subscribe for more.